I was at this Christmas party with my wife, and she decides to just drink a bit too much, get a little loose, and, well, she starts talking, and she says a secret that she wanted to hide from me to the day that she died, but now I know about it, and oh my goodness, I don't know what to think. I'm just tired, tired of everything, but I know that I don't want to stop before I've had my revenge. After all, she took everything from me. My health, my happiness, she destroyed my life and hers in a single minute. Let me give you the context before I tell you who I'm even talking about. My name's Liam, and I turned 35 this year. I come from a large family of farmers, and I grew up on a ranch. The ranch is currently owned by my grandmother, who inherited it from her parents. My grandfather, God rest his soul, passed away before I was born. Grandma and grandpa believed in having a large family, and... They had seven children in total, four boys, three girls. I was their son, Major's child. I have two siblings, Alice and Grant. Since my grandparents had so many children, I obviously had a lot of cousins growing up. I spent the better part of my childhood on the farm, running around, playing with my cousins. I was pretty close to all of them, but the closest to the ones in my age group as it usually happens. So... My cousin Marcus was my aunt's kid, and my cousin Joe was my uncle's eldest son. And then, of course, there was Grant. The four of us were known as the troublemakers of the family, always getting into all kind of shenanigans. So, we were each other's best friends and knew everything about each other. We went to the same school all our lives, and when we turned 18, went to the same community college as well. I graduated with a degree in construction while... Grant and Joe chose to stay behind and help out at the farm. Marcus chose to stay at the lumber business, and, well, we'd always wanted to stay close to home and each other. When I was 25, I met a woman named Mary. Mary Ann lived in the city and had dreams of becoming an actress. She was gorgeous, an absolutely gorgeous woman, and men chose her by the dozens, which was why I was pleasantly surprised when she asked me out out of all the people. Not to undermine myself, but I was pretty average looking. The other three were uh, loads better looking than me, and I'd gotten used to the third wheeling in their relationships. Ugh. Marianne asked me out, definitely gave me a much-needed ego boost. She said that she thought it was really, uh, well, good to meet me, and I was nice and funny. After a few dates, we decided to make it official and enter into a relationship. Two months later, I brought her to the farm to meet my friend and family for the first time. She immediately fell in love with the farm, and everybody in the family really liked her as well. All of my cousins told me that they thought she was terrific. Grant even joked about her being way out of my league, Ugh. but I knew he didn't really mean it. Or did he? Well, Mary Ann was nice, kind, and obviously beautiful. She enamored me from the beginning of our relationship, and everyone always told me how lucky I was. And so the first chance I got, I proposed to that woman. She accepted my proposal enthusiastically and told me how eager she was to get married and live with me in my beautiful home. After a short engagement period, we got married. In hindsight, I might have rushed into things. The entire process of meeting her, getting engaged, and then marrying her took less than a year. She soon settled into a married life and embraced my family as her own. Due to my job at the construction company, I occasionally had to be away from the farm for long periods of time. During those times, I missed my wife like crazy. She was always a great source of comfort for me during those times. You know, always calling, checking up on me. Well, six months later, she told me that she was pregnant. We were going to have a baby. I was over the moon with the news. We enthusiastically planned out everything and bought tons of clothes and baby stuff. Mary Ann gave birth to a healthy baby girl. We named her Sally. We had three more children over the next eight years. Two boys and a girl. They were the pride and joy of my life. At 35 years of age, I considered myself the luckiest man in the world. I had a healthy, happy family and all the love I could ever ask for. And then it all came crumbling down. Right after my 35th birthday, we were all gathered for Christmas, and it was late at night. Uh, all the kids had been put to sleep, and we were drinking wine by the fireplace, playing some board games. I was sitting beside my wife, and we were laughing, we were joking, 
And for some reason, we started discussing the kids and their futures and how I hope that the years uh, from now, my kids would be sitting at the same fireplace enjoying Christmas together. My wife laughingly said that she didn't know about my kids, but hers would always stay best friends for life. I said, her kids, my kids, it's the same thing. She was really drunk by then and slurring her words, and she replied, and she would not know about that, whether her kids were my kids or vice versa. Oh, I asked her, uh, who would know? And she drunkenly gestured towards Marcus, Grant, and Joe, laughing and saying, maybe I should ask them. The entire conversation was turning so weird, and I told her to stop drinking since she was saying nonsense. She just kept laughing and laughing and then said we should go to sleep. I completely forgot about it and the conversation over the next week and everybody gathered at the house and prepared to return to their homes. I was scheduled to leave for a period of two weeks after New Year and the day before I left, my mother told me that she and my father had something they need to discuss with me. They were being really secretive about it and only started talking when I was in their room. Uh, well, and then they closed the door. They started by saying that they've been trying to tell me about their suspicions for a few days but held off on it until they had definite proof. Well, I asked them, proof of what? They said they had proof that Mary Ann had cheated on me and that my children weren't mine. I sat there reeling in shock. I couldn't believe that they could level to such a disgusting accusation of my beloved wife. I told them they're sadly mistaken and nothing of the sort was anywhere close to being true. My mother sadly said that she had known that I would respond like this, but they had proof of their words. They handed me a DNA test. It was a report stating that out of four children, only the oldest Sally was mine. The rest weren't. I asked my parents how could they have ever even suspected such a thing, and they said that they've overheard a conversation on Christmas Eve and could not make sense of any of it, but they thought something was off about the whole thing, and I just wanted to make sure. So, they had taken hair samples from me and the children and sent them off to be tested. The reports had arrived this morning, after which they decided to tell me, and that was not even everything. They said that the children's DNA was not an exact match for me, but our DNA showed almost 20% similarities, which meant that I was still somehow related to them, and I could not believe what they were telling me. Not only had Mary Ann cheated on me, but she had done so with somebody in the family. My parents sat me down and comforted me, saying that none of it was my fault and they weren't going to do anything without me asking them to, and they had provided me with answers and how I dealt with the situation was entirely up to me. Well, I was in a haze all day, not knowing what to do, what to think, or even how to respond seeing my wife in front of me. The next day, I left as scheduled and got a much-needed rest from everything. Uh, the two weeks away gave me some much-needed time to think about stuff, what I should do next, and what would the correct course of action even be? I mean, should I go confront Marianne? Should I first try to find out who the father of the kids are? It didn't make any difference to me, as I love these children, and finding out they weren't mine... It wouldn't make me love them any less, but I still need to know. I've been married for almost nine years at this point, and the betrayal would take a while to sink in. Over and over, I thought about who the father could be, and then I remembered. My wife gesturing to Grant and others when she was laughing that night. Could it be? As one of my best brothers betrayed me. Marcus, Joe, Grant, the men I would have trusted with my life, the men I would have given my life for. Could they? have really done such a thing? When I returned home from my two-week trip, I had a solid plan in mind. I was going to do the same thing that my parents had gone, get a DNA test. My parents cornered me as soon as I came back, asking me what I've decided, and I asked them, give me some time to figure something out. I then collected DNA samples from my three youngest children, and then samples from Grant, Marcus, and Joe, and sent them for work. I submitted the samples to the lab in the city, and they told me that I would get the results in about a week. A week later, I went to pick up the results and was even more shocked than ever before. Guys, each of the three men had fathered one of my children. My second child was Grant, my third was Marcus, and Joe had fathered the fourth one, so my wife had been sleeping with all of my brothers. This was a betrayal of the highest order. I could not believe what was happening to me. 
For a second, I wanted just to run away from everything, to get away from the town, my family, and my lying, cheating wife, and just disappear off the face of the earth. I could not face what's been done to me. Did anyone else know? Was the whole family in on it? Who else was my wife cheating on me with? I felt sick to my stomach, but along with the disbelief came a strong, intense desire for revenge. Why should they get away with their wrongdoings and I be left to wallow in shame and self-pity? I wasn't to blame for all this, and I would make them pay for what they've done to me. I would take the most precious thing from them as they've done to me. I just need to be a bit patient, plan out accordingly, and guys, I'll see you in the next update. What's up, everybody? Mr. Redito here. So today's story is that of revenge. And this is not an ordinary revenge. This is a revenge against three brothers. Guys, this is your family, and you're supposed to be able to trust them. All right, so we're going to jump into the first update. But if you have not subscribed to the channel, take a second, hit the subscribe button, and here is update number one. Hey, it's OP. I'm back with a gripping update. So, Marcus was the easiest. He had thriving business, and it was uh, the metaphorical love of his life. He'd started the business from scratch. It was thriving now, and he supplied lumber to a lot of factories in town. He was always bragging about his achievements and how well his business was doing. All I had to do was make sure I left him with nothing. Over the course of the next few weeks, I asked him a lot of questions about his business, where most of the equipment was stored, where his shipping trucks were parked... After a detailed but casual convo, I asserted that there was a single warehouse that was integral to his business. Uh, the equipment? Alone there? A couple hundreds of thousands? And Marcus was about to receive a very important shipment that would solidify a deal that he's been trying to get sealed for the past few months. If anything happened to that shipment, he would never recover from the debt occurred. And from what Marcus told me, he had a lot of other big shipments due soon for which he had already accepted payment. The next part was a source of large quantities of oil. See, on one of my trips to another state, I bought multiple containers of oil and other flammable substances that don't leave any trace for investigation if it appears to have a case of that. Then I watched and I waited. See, I already knew where the CCTV cameras were placed, so I carefully mapped out a route that would avoid detection from the cameras, once inside the warehouse, it would be easy, like taking candy from a baby, to hide behind the large piles of lumber and avoid detection. All I had to do next was hire a couple of people, pay them well enough that they would keep their mouth shut, and get them to carry out the plan. Next, I took Marcus out to the city and got him roaring drunk. I made sure to confirm that nobody was going to be working at the warehouse that night, the night of the fire. And then it would be completely deserted. After this, I took him home and snuck out again, and I went to the nearest warehouse at a distance of about 30 minutes from the house. I put on a plain black cloth with a ski mask. The men I hired joined me soon after, and I supervised everything from afar, while they did the dirty work for me with their own hands. The next step was to cut the power connection. Having done that, they moved into position while holding from the cameras and then broke into the warehouse using the code. <laughs> I already pried out of Marcus. It took over an hour to locate the shipment we needed to ruin and spill the oil everywhere. It was almost dawn by the time the boys finished up and set fire to everything. I quickly raced away to my vehicle and drove off into the night. Luckily, I got home without anybody noticing and then uh, we went to breakfast with a big old smile on our faces anticipating some good news. I'd chosen to do this on a Saturday night, knowing that the place would be closed on the weekend, and with any luck, nobody would even notice until Monday. Well, right on cue. As we were sitting for breakfast on Monday morning, Marcus got a highly distressing phone call, which made him race outside. He hopped into his vehicle and sped away. Later that day, he came home disheveled and told us that his recent shipment was completely wiped out and he had racked up almost a million dollars in damages alone. I pretended to be shocked and concerned and asked him how it could have happened, and hadn't the cameras caught anything. He responded that the cameras had been in the perfect working condition, and they hadn't caught a thing. The site manager was theorizing that a faulty cord might have caught fire and taken everything out, but nobody really knew for sure. 
I acted very concerned and asked him what he would do now and how he would recover from this, and he said that he's taken major losses, and his insurance company and risk evaluators were telling him that there's no way he was going to get the business back on his feet again. He was ruined, and soon debtors and customers alike would come calling for their refunds and their payments. One down, two to go. Update number two. Hey everyone, after taking my revenge on Marcus last time, I rode the high of satisfaction for a few days before turning my mind to more important stuff. The next on my list was Joe, who had taken over the farming business. He was responsible for overseeing the workers and for managing our crops in general. He was the one who would negotiate prices, who would arrange for the transport of crops and would supply most of the grocery stores nearby with fresh produce. The man loved the outdoors and could not stand being cooped up or confined to one place. He owned a pack of horses and he loved them like his own children. I'd spent a long time thinking about an appropriate punishment for him, and I'd finally arrived at a conclusion. So, he did not live in the main farmhouse, but inhabited a small guest house out back. He had always said that he was most comfortable there, and this way he was closer to his pack of horses, and there was plenty of safety for his pets to run around. I observed Joe for a while, thinking how best to strike him where it hurts the most, I noticed that most of his time was spent around his horses, and he fussed and obsessed over every detail related to them. He would spend hours researching which diet was best for them, the best methods to breed them, and the best methods to keep them healthy. He even researched grooming techniques to ensure that they had the longest, most luscious manes in the entire town. I kept a religious watch on him for a week or two, figuring out patterns and determining time periods where I could steal the keys to the barn and when a fresh shipment of horse feed would come in. So, the next step was to steal some uh, sedatives from the drug cabinet in the house. Since we had a lot of animals around and sometimes they get a little panicky, we always keep some drugs on hand for emergency situations. Since a lot of tranquilizers and painkillers were in high enough doses to be lethal to humans, we needed to keep them away from the children in the home. My grandmother always had the key to it. I had to sneak the key away from her without being noticed as well, and, well, I eventually managed it and promptly stole a bunch of them. The next day, I mixed a mild sedative into the horse water trough, which made them all groggy and a bit confused. Since I knew that Joe would notice the changed behavior of his precious little horsies right away, I arranged to spend a day outside with him. We went out for the day, and I took him two towns over, where we scoped out a pair of horses that were up for sale. On the way back, we stopped for a nice lunch. A couple of sleeping pills mixed in his drink, easy peasy, and he was yawning the whole way back. Everything was going according to plan. That night, I took out one of our animal trucks from the garage, one of the largest ones we use to transport farm animals in and spent the better part of the night luring the horses inside with food. It took a while, as a few of them were incredibly fussy, and a few of them had to be poked and prodded awake. Eventually, I herded all of the animals into the truck. Then I drove them to a grassland ten miles away, and I just let them out into the wild. I then drove back to the farm before anybody woke up. Joe was absolutely devastated to find his horse gone the next morning. He spent the day filing a police report and combing the town, trying to find his precious animals. Of course, he never did, and watching him cycle through the stages of grief, it was extremely cathartic. Two down, one more to go. Update number three. Hey, it's Opie again. As I had mentioned before, Grant was older than me by one year. He'd gotten married around the same time as me, and he and his wife Sarah had twin boys. Sarah had a successful career in the city and had been an up-and-coming lawyer before Grant had convinced her to give up her career and become a stay-at-home mom. She had not wanted to in the start, and only after Grant had convinced her that he was madly obsessively in love with her had she agreed. From what I knew of her, she would flip out when I told her about everything. So I offered to take her and her little boy shopping in town one day. She agreed, and after running errands, I asked her if we could sit down at a cafe somewhere and talk. 
Once seated and making sure the boys were out of earshot, I showed her all the DNA test results that I've gathered, showing that Grant had fathered the child with my wife. Understandably, she was absolutely shocked, to the point of being speechlessness. Once the news sank in, she starts to cry and asks me how long I've known. I told her I just found out, and I figured that she deserved to know the truth as well. She asked me what I was going to do with the info and whether I was going to divorce my wife or not. I told her all about my revenge plan and told her that she could join me if she wanted. All she would have to do is just help me with one little thing. It was Grant's turn and with him, Mary Ann's. I wanted to humiliate them properly and get Sarah her proof at the same time. So I snuck and stalled hidden cameras in our bedroom and waited for things to play themselves out. I kept the cameras on for a few weeks and went on a lot of trips during that time. I'd counted on my wife to bring Grant to our bedroom and she did not disappoint. One night when there was a harvest festival being hosted on a nearby farm, the entire family, including the children, went there to have some fun. I asked Sarah to engineer a situation where they would be forced to spend time together and she rose to the occasion magnificently. All she had to do was mislead Marianne about the time that they would be leaving for the festival. Well, leave without her and then have to get Grant to go back and offer her a ride in his car. She pulled the entire plan off without a hitch. Later that night, I reviewed the footage and got video proof of them kissing and hooking up in my bedroom. And that was not all I got. Over the weeks, I had managed to get footage of Marianne and Marcus hooking up in our bed as well. She tried to, quote, comfort him over his recent business losses. Watching them partake in such a disgusting act enraged me, but cemented my desire for revenge even further. She also mentioned something else in one of the videos that piqued my interest. While she was talking to Marcus, he apologized to her for not helping her out more with her problem with money, since, you know, he wasn't doing so well right now. She replied that it's fine. She would try to make do with what she already had, and I couldn't wrap my head around it for the life of me. We weren't exactly hurting for the dollar, and I had always shared everything I earned with her. She didn't really have any reason to need more money than I knew of, and why wasn't she asking me for money if she needed it? As far as she knew, I was oblivious to her antics and was still playing the role of faithful, devoted husband, but I wanted to uncover all her secrets and expose them one after the other, until she was so ashamed and embarrassed that she begged for me to forgive her. I thought back about to how we met. She has been uh, such an aspiring actress and had been on her way to the audition when we first met. She had given up on an acting soon after getting engaged and had shown no inclination to pursue it any further. Even though she had dazzled me with her passion and dreams of performing on Broadway someday, it was all starting to feel like she's been acting the entire time that we've been together and had ensnared me to get what she wanted. And then suddenly it hit me. Marianne often joked about how she spent so much time looking after the kids in my absence and she never got any time to herself. And so, whenever I got home after a trip, I would give her my credit card and tell her to take a solo trip to the city, meet up, friends, go to the spa, shop, and have fun in general. I never asked her for the details about what she got up to during those days, and she never volunteered anything either. What exactly was she doing those days, and who exactly was she meeting? Update number four. So, guys... I decided to put my revenge on Grant and Marianne on hold for a bit, since I wanted to find out why she needed the money. I decided to follow her to the next town over when she went into the town. She drove around for a bit of time, and I followed her as she finally parked near a park, all the way across the city. She got out and then walked over to a man and a boy sitting at the shade of a tree. I got out, snuck over, and sat behind their tree, listening to the conversation ear for ear, to my complete and utter shock, the boy, who was around 11 years of age, called her mommy. And not once, but several times. So there was no mistaking it. She stayed there for a bit, talking to the boy. An hour or so later, she gets up, walks a few places away with the man, and discreetly handed him an envelope. Then she walked away. A few moments after she left, I went to the man and confronted him. I demanded to know how he knew my wife, and why his son was calling her mommy. The man seemed shocked and said that he had no idea Marianne had married again. He said that he was her first husband. They've gotten married really young, 
because she was already pregnant. However, she's gotten bored of him soon and decides to go and get a divorce. She had left her child behind to start a new life, and he had gotten full custody of his own son. So, however, she still had to pay a monthly child support, you know, which was in the envelope that I'd seen them exchange. I then asked him if he had any old photos of them together, of her and her son. Well, he was more than happy to oblige and handed them over as I detailed my own marriage with Marianne. He told me that she had cheated on him for the entirety of the marriage as well, and he would love for her to get exposed. My plan is complete. I then decided to confront everybody. The very next day, I gathered everybody to the living room. I told them I have a surprise for them. Sarah made sure all the kids were away from my little announcement, and as soon as the coast was clear, I get started. I start off by saying that I've been so extremely lucky in this life to have made such good friends or brothers and had such a lovely wife, and I wanted to share something special about them with everybody. I then turned on the television. The videos I've gotten from the hidden cameras in my room starts playing one by one. Everyone starts gasping for air and shouting at once. There were cries of horror and shock of all around as people realized they were playing in front of them. Everybody started looking accusingly at Marianne, Grant, Joe, Marcus even, who were turning more embarrassed by the second. But wait, I announced, that's not all. Then I started handing out photocopies of the DNA records that I've gotten done showing the three men as fathers. Marianne starts to cry, and the men start speaking up, trying to defend themselves. And then, you know what I do? I drop a cherry on top. I showed everybody the pictures I've gotten from Marianne's ex-husband and her, well, secret son. There was nothing else to say. Marianne stands up and just makes a dart for the exit. Sarah got up and announced that she was divorcing Grant, and with the incriminating evidence she had, she was going to drain him of every dollar he's ever earned. She... Then followed suit and stormed out, and that everybody is how I got my revenge. Final update. Well, life did take a while to settle down, but it did eventually, and Marcus never recovered from the damage to his business. He starts drinking and gambling his pain away. He became riddled with debt and became a shred of the man he once was before. He did not have a single penny left to his name and relied on friends and family, therefore, to help him get by. Joe fell into depression and tried uh, any and all possible ways to get his beloved horses back. From paying private investigators to putting ads in newspapers. None of it worked out, of course, and he never saw his beloved horses again. Sarah divorced Grant, and true to her word, she took him to court and took everything he's ever had. She was also granted full custody of their kids during the divorce, and in fact, Grant was bitterly resentful about that. She went back to college passed additional exams and was able to go back to her once-blossoming career. She soon became a highly successful lawyer, and Grant spent forever being insecure and jealous of her. He never remarried and was always more concerned with being bitter ex than looking forward to life. Okay, but as for Mary Ann, she tried to disappear. <laughs> right after I finalized our divorce, I had to hire a private investigator to track her down. She's slippery. But once I did... The court ordered her to pay the child support for the kids that she left me to. Of course, we never told the kids the truth, and we never will. If there was one good thing I got from the whole ordeal, it was them. That's it. And I planned on building a new world for myself, with just them in it and no traces of the deceit and lies. Alright guys, let me know in the comment section what you think about this revenge. I was reading some of the comments, and I can agree with most of the revenge... But I have to agree with some of the comments who said, messing with the horses, that was just too far. Let me know your thoughts about it, though, in the comment section down below. Either way, I mean, what that guy did, going behind OP's back with OP's wife is ridiculous, but did the horses deserve to be, well, basically just let free? Guys, let me know your thoughts about that once again. My name is Mr. Redito. I narrate stories like this every single day, so if you guys want to be a part of these daily readings, consider subscribing. I'll see you tomorrow, and of course, remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya.